Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where I've no clue what time it is, what day it is, or possibly what month it is, but I do know that we're due a monthly roundup. So apparently this is April. Yeah, I don't know where the last month went either. I hope everybody is keeping safe and well, that you're practicing social distancing and you're making yourself kind of safe and everybody is just fine. Um, and those are the best things I can send you right now. My wishes, because the, the way the world's working at the moment is all a little topsy-turvy. But that doesn't mean that we didn't have time for games. And as you guys know by now, my monthly roundup is where I talk about the new games I've added to my collection, um, games I've been playing um, and enjoying, um, and things like trading. And mostly this is just an opportunity for you guys to kind of sit down with me and tell me about your collections too, because it's no fun talking about board games in a vacuum. It's way more fun when other people get involved. So I look forward to hearing what you've been playing. Um, I wonder, you know, have you had a chance to play more games? Games since you've been kind of stuck in your house or have you had a chance to play fewer games because you aren't able to meet up with people so tell me how you've been coping with all these kind of restrictions and stuff and how it's affected your gaming be that positively or negatively um, and loads of people have been finding like workarounds or you know um, other ways to play games that they didn't necessarily do before and I think that's really exciting there seems to have been an explosion of people playing games on platforms like Tabletop Simulator, Tabletopia, um, Yucata.de, which just seems to be my personal favourite, um, and a whole host of stuff, including just playing games over Skype or over Zoom. I've not tried Zoom, but people seem to speak quite highly of it. Um, and certain games that lend themselves well to that kind of play. So I've seen a lot of people playing code names. I know I myself played Onitama um, over the, the interwebs, and I've played Sakai to as well and I have a plan to play Las Vegas that nice dice rolling game so I think if you can bring your ingenuity to play I think there's lots of opportunities for gaming happening right now um so let's jump right into basically you know what what games I've picked up this month um and normally you would think maybe there are fewer because people are stuck at home there's a lot of uncertainty you know the general vibe however seems to be that people are, are buying because they're at home um and I don't know whether you want to call it panic buying or something like that but when you're spending so much time at home and you're not spending money on other things games seem like a really great like investment right now um and I think I'm not the only one who feels this way I think especially when you've nothing else to look forward to the idea of a game coming in the post um that's completely new for you to learn and experience has extra merit or extra weight than normal um and so i think people are indeed still buying plenty of games myself vaguely included so let's jump right in and i said that bit already but we'll say it again let's jump right in <laughs> who jumps where like really okay so what games did i pick up this month um well as many of you might remember from the previous month, I was on a kick with kind of smaller games because I was a, had a, I was having a hard time feeling like playing games at all. And I had a lot of fun with some of the smaller games I picked up last month. So be that as it may, this month has been a bit of a turnaround because I, I felt for a little bit like I kind of got my mojo back. Um, and so the first purchase of this month um, goes to On Mars from Vital Sarda. So um, Vital Sarda creates these wonderfully complex games and they're known for being complex but also stunningly beautiful and insanely expensive. Um, and On Mars is one I watched while it was actually available on the Kickstarter and the price put me off a lot because at the time I owned two other Lasarda games which are Lisboa and Kanban and I didn't feel like I played them often enough to merit getting such a big heavy euro game when I wasn't already playing my other big heavy euro game so on Mars is unsurprisingly about going to Mars um, and setting up kind of a colony there um, and I'd seen quite a number of reviews for it and I kept kind of watching and thinking and then we just kind of got to the point I suppose where we were wondering would we buy another board game at all and all that seemed to be left was the the big euros um, and we decided because I suppose we're stuck at home why not just you know make that jump 
On Mars is a stunningly beautiful game, and I think that's one of the main reasons I was attracted to it. Um, big your games don't scare me. I, I don't think they get as much play as lighter games because they take a lot more brain power and usually a lot more time to set up and a lot more time to play. But there was something about On Mars that just made me feel like it would it would fit us really well. There's some, we love terraforming Mars, and there's something about the way this game's put together. Um, basically the board is split into two halves which is the part before you get on the shuttle to go to Mars and then there's a part where you're on Mars and you can do stuff on the planet and you have to prepare accordingly to be able to bring stuff from one side of the board to the other via like a little shuttle and it doesn't necessarily go every turn so you have to work out exactly what you need when and then go and apply it once you land on Mars and that idea really really appealed to me I could just I don't know, it just seemed more straightforward than a lot of Lazarda's other games. So obviously it showed up, it came in a very, very large box because you know what? It's a very, very big box and it is as beautiful and as lovely as everyone has said. Um, I really, really enjoyed the game and it didn't take as long for us to understand as I thought it might. Um, we did watch a kind of a how to play video. I watched Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules um, and it was very, very informative and helpful. It's probably the first time I've ever actually watched a proper, like full on tutorial for how to play because I assumed the game was just going to be that difficult, but it's actually really straightforward. And in my mind, it makes a lot of cognitive sense. Like you're doing this to do this, you're getting this to do this and then do this. Um, and I, that really helped me understand it as a whole. Um, so our first game went really well. I really like the player rates. Um, they're very, very helpful for telling you exactly how everything works, when everything works. And by the second game, we didn't even need them at all, which says a lot, but we really, really liked it. Um, so I'm very chuffed I kind of splurged and got on Mars. It was everything I anticipated it would be and possibly a little bit more. Um, and I look forward to playing more ga games of it. I think it might be my favorite of the Lasarda titles. Now, speaking of Lacerda titles, <laughs> this is where it all goes a little bit funny, so please don't judge me. Um, so originally, when I wanted to, was thinking about getting it on Mars, actually, um, Lacerda's other game, The Gallerist, has been on my wish list longer. It's something that I was hoping I would trade for or would pick up secondhand. You know, it, I, it's not, I wasn't high on my list of acquisitions, for obvious reasons, heavy Euro game. Um, and... I kind of, I really, really wanted to get a copy. Um, and I went looking everywhere and sure enough, I couldn't find any. It's not, it wasn't for sale anywhere. No one was selling it. So we bought On Mars instead. This is where it gets funny. So about two days after we order On Mars, um, we find a copy of The Gallerist and it's the last one in the shop in Holland. And it's like, what do we do? We get The Gallerist or not? So I'm very glad I have a, a very lovely husband who's like, who just, who just gives in to my whims. Um, and also just loves board games as much as I do. So we bought a copy of The Gallerist. So The Gallerist arrived a week after um, On Mars and I was, I was, you know what, I've heard great things. This is one about where you collect art and you sell it. And you want to make these artists famous so you can sell their art for more money in their gallery. It's definitely the most economically in tune of Lasarda's games. Also look the most straightforward um, from watching the reviews because it is very, it is, you know, it's very simple to understand um, how everything everything works um so it showed up and we sat down to play this i also watched another um playthrough video because yet again i was anticipating lasarda game being complicated and i watched rodney smith watch it played um that was also a first time um rodney's rather lovely isn't he um for the as you actually do many of you watch these kind of how to play videos beforehand this is a very new experience for me normally we just read the, read the rule book and struggle on but um, I just, I, I just, you know, sometimes you think the game's so big that you're gonna need all the help you can get. But um, the gallery surprised me, no, very straightforward. Um, yet again, also another um, kind of very helpful kind of hint sheet um, for playing the game. And you know what, it actually seemed very simple. But, but and then maybe that's just because there's only two of us playing. Um, but a lot of like the fun of it seems to be that you can kick somebody out of an action they've performed and then the person you kicked out gets kind of a bonus. Um, and I think that works better with more people than just two, but we found 
ourselves doing the same actions the whole time. Um, but I did like it a lot. The components are great. Um, it didn't take very long to play, actually. It took us just over an hour, I think, on our first play. Um, we had to wonder, were we doing something wrong that it finished that quickly? Um, but I definitely wanted to play more of it. It definitely seemed more simplistic um, than his other designs. But I liked it. And I liked the artwork in it, too. The theme's just cool. I've got a thing for art. So as you can see, I've been playing a number of heavy games this month. Um, okay, so next on the agenda, and I'm going to get the year this wrong, but I'm going to guess, and I think it's Brussels 1897. See, well, if you're aware or unaware, there's another Brussels game that's not 1897. I want to say it's like 1893. The boxes behind me, I probably should check. I'll bring it up somewhere in the, the TV screen below. And the original Brussels game is this really cool Euro game where you are an architect in Brussels and you're trying to do all these kind of sorts of things in the, in the town, basically. Well, the town, Brussels isn't really a town, is it? In the city of Brussels, um, where you're building buildings, you're kind of gaining influence, you're hiring architects. Um, and it has a whole bunch of very cool mechanisms all jammed together that shouldn't work but really really do um, and it has a great kind of form of area control as well and it's very thematic at the same time so we really really like that here um, and then last year at Essen um, this version of Brussels has um, Brussels 1897 <laughs> was released and it's a card version of the old Brussels game um, and so my husband was eager to pick this up because he's a really big fan of Brussels and sure enough, this Brussels card version is um, pretty much identical to the full game. It's, lo it's lost some of its mechanics, but the whole essence is there. And we didn't even have to really learn how to play the card version because we knew how to play the big one. Um, it's very much streamlined. It plays very smoothly and it's a lot cheaper than the original. I think it's a, it's a great pickup, to be honest. And it's got some very clever kind of ways of interpreting the original game that I didn't expect using cards that I think are super cool. Um, so that was actually really fun and really impressive and it played a lot quicker too. Um, and I don't normally go for kind of the card versions or the dice versions of bigger games. You know like Castle de Burgundy has all sorts of versions of it, dice ones, card ones, um, and so do a whole host of other games. And so normally they don't appeal, um, but this one actually, yeah, this one turned out really, really good. I'm still not certain if I would want to own both versions. Um, I think, I suppose they have different strengths, but they are just so similar. Um, so I'd love to know, do you guys have any card or dice versions of, of bigger games? And how did they work out for you? Because like there's Nations and there's Nations the dice game. I could think of some other of the Istanbul, I think has other versions too. I would love to hear some of your feedback on those. Um, and do you think it's odd when they reiterate a game just in a different format? Like, does it seem a little lazy, perhaps? I don't know. So yes, yeah, so that was Brussels, 1897. <laughs> or at least that's what I'm going to call it. So the last two items on my list aren't here yet, um, but they are arriving today. Listen, I've seen photos. Um, so I'm gonna include them in this list. And this is where the Stefan Feldness of my life just kind of bubbles forth and overflows and takes over. Um, and this is also one that kind of went strange. So um, there's two Staff on Felt games that we really wanted to try next, um, apart from maybe the ridiculously expensive ones. And this is Luna and Amerigo. So I love Staff on Felt, really love his designs. Um, I love that they're slightly different every time you play. They don't feel very similar despite him having a lot of titles. Um, and to be fair, I just, I love Point Salad um, and I like Dry Euros. So why wouldn't I love Staff on Feld. Um, so these two titles um, were on our list of things to pick up because, you know, well, Stefan Feld. And we managed to find somebody who is um, selling them secondhand on Board Game Geek. How cool, right? And someone, you know, in the UK. So we asked, were they willing to, to trade us these games? Uh, well, not trade, to sell us these games. And we went, yeah, cool. Um, and the guy in the UK said, yeah, that's grand, but I'm gonna have to wait two weeks till, you know, quarantine has kind of, has ended. And we're like, okay, there's no real rush. And then two weeks came and went, and he went, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get to the post office to post these, you know, to maybe after Easter. And we went, you know what, it's fine. Whenever you feel like you can post them, you can post them and we kind of just we just wrote it off because the world's a crazy place right now you can't be expecting people to get to post offices but on a 
enough, he contacted us last weekend and he goes, well, actually, I have to go to the post office, so I'm able to send both your games. Is that okay? Um, and, of course, at this point, we've already bought On Mars and the Galleries, so it was all a bit stupid. Um, <laughs> um, but you don't say no to Stefan Feld, do you? Do you? So, no. So, these two are arriving today, so I can't tell you much more about them other than their Stefan Feld games, and I'm very excited. Um, so, yeah, it's actually been a really good month for games. All of it almost entirely by accident um, and I'm having fun playing these games which is the best part so one more game has arrived this month and this is a review copy um, from North Star Games and this is Oceans um, so Oceans has just come off Kickstarter that's how my copy has just landed here and it's this beautiful game about basically adapting to life under the sea um if you've played evolution um you this is a very kind of similar idea but this um is a standalone game and so far i've unboxed it and i've played a game or two and it's gorgeous it's so pretty i need to just stop saying that or my review will be it's so pretty it's so pretty i just love it um but it's a it's a light enough card game where you're kind of you're connecting traits on your fit on your fish and you're trying to basically adapt as many fish as possible um it really reminds me of something like smash up where you know you're playing different traits onto certain things so that you know they all have special abilities um but i really liked it i thought it might be a little light on our end but no and there's lots of variation and there's a couple of different ways you can approach building your fish schools um every time and so far so good um so i'm looking forward to playing more of that and i'll be bringing you a review um soon soon okay so that's everything i bought this month <sighs> you know what i'm not going to complain i'm very fortunate that i'm in a position to be able to buy games at all but um as i've said before and i'll probably say again we don't really have a life outside of games so this is where all our excess funds is funneled um and of course you know games it's games are just kind of who we are at this point okay so have you bought anything this month want to hear about it um if you didn't i i can kind of understand why you know what i mean i think i think this is a time you want to be careful with your money for sure so let's hear what you picked up or if you didn't pick up anything what you would like to or what you're keeping your eyes on um okay so next section so this month's trade portion is going to be tiny because people can't go places can't go to post offices can't post things in general um so you know trading for a lot of people is kind of out however I do see that a lot of people are willing to trade right now too because it's a great way not to spend money but to acquire new games to play. So I have managed one trade um, and it's not here yet but there's no... Uh, how to explain this? I haven't put any pressure on anybody to send anything in a particular time frame because everybody knows the world's a bit weird now. So we're like, when, you're when you can send it, send it we'll send ours and you know it'll it'll work out maybe i'm being a little trusting um but like i said i don't i don't know i just think you gotta be a bit forgiving right now um so what i've traded away is my copy of the new fancy calis that i really didn't like at all woohoo got rid of that and this is for a copy of agra so agra is actually something i saw um tom vassal review probably a really long time ago right now um because the board reminded me a lot of raja the ganges it's this really busy colorful board and tom's main complaint or critique of the game was that there's a little kind of side ramp in which you keep your scores um for the different tracks in the game and he thought it was like um it was too easy to knock it over and components would fall out of it um and that didn't turn me off at all but it's one that sat on my list for absolutely ages and i never thought to buy it it's just one of those it was like a mild curiosity but since i'm getting rid of a game i don't like and i could get rid of an unknown game i'd get, rid get an unknown game instead that's got to be better so that is my only trade for the month um i'll see when it turns up who knows um i don't know if any of you guys have been like trading your games it does seem like a, a terrible time to do this right yeah like yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not sure how i feel about trading right now obviously i'm, I'm glad when it happens but um yeah it's a, it's a very weird time to be trading so that's the trade zone, super short stuff. Um, let's jump right into, and I love saying jump right into, I need a new phrase. What do you think I should be saying instead of, let's jump into, let's move on to, let's discuss. Um, okay, yeah, so let's talk about the games I have been playing. So my question to you is, do you have a game in your shelf that no matter what, no matter what circumstances, you would always be willing to play it? 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, the, the truth is, I have, a, I have a lot of games, and I have a lot of games to choose from, but there's very few, I would say, that I would always play. Um, and this is the one I always agree to play, but we never actually play very often. And this is Aeon's End. So Aeon's End is a cooperative card game um, where you deck build your way into something cool to take down a monster um, and you get to play together. Um, Co-op games are terrible in our house and we're very picky about card games as well. But for some reason, this one is just good. I, I think that's just the answer for it. It's just really, really good and really, really fun. It might remind you a little of something like Sentinels of the Multiverse and that you're taking down the big boss and you know, you'll flip over cards for the boss to see what he's gonna do next. Um, but when it comes to um, your own deck, you get to build it yourself. You get to buy things into it and you get to play specific characters who do particular things. Now, I've always liked Aeon's End, and anytime we ask, you know, what board game do you want to play tonight, and I'm asked, do you want to play Aeon's End, I say yes, without a doubt, actually, um, which is pretty rare indeed. But over the last weekend or so, I got to play a couple of games of it back to back, because we were just enjoying it so much. Um, I sat down and I sorted all the cards we had, and that made it so much easier to play with. Um, the game comes with dividers and things, so you can section everything off because all the bosses have different decks. There are different cards you lay out each time um, that you can buy to put in your deck, which is really cool. And you can uncover all sorts of combos and exciting things. And I just, you know what? I just had so much fun with it. Like the only thing I think that lets the, the game down a little bit is the look of the cards. I, I think they could look better than they do. But it's the only thing that annoys me about the game. But everything else is really, really cool um, and really, really fun. And I just, I have a, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I keep wondering why I haven't played it more often. Um, so if that sounds like something that's kind of your jam, I definitely worth checking, it's definitely worth looking at. Um, so yeah, so that's Aeon's End. I got a good couple of games of that in. So second thing on my list is something that arrived last month in my small games pile. And this is San Juan. Um, so San Juan is basically, I believe Puerto Rico, the card game is what they seem is like the other title for it. And this is a game about playing cards, unsurprisingly, and you're building buildings, um, is what it is. You're, like, you're building your town, um, and you put all these kind of buildings in it. They're worth victory points. It's a tableau builder. You lay the cards out. And it's very much about hand management because everything doesn't cost money, it costs cards. Um, so the whole trick is you want to be drawing cards to have enough cards to pay for buildings, to play them down, and then the buildings all have special abilities and do cool things. This may sound familiar if if you played Race for the Galaxy um, because this is its precursor. So when I heard that, I was I was all over this. I was like, oh, cool, let, let, let's play this. Except San Juan isn't a mass of symbols. It has like text written on the cards. This blew my mind just a little bit. Um, and it's it's just cool. I just, I don't know what, I don't know how, I don't know how, no, I do know how to put it. It's just great. Um, there's loads of synergy between the cards. You can play very, very quickly. I like that the text on it is very straightforward and obvious. Uh, the art, it, you know, it's old Ravensburger, Aaliyah game, you know, it's one of those numbered ones, so it, it looks a bit odd, but it's really fun. And I thought because the cards are, well, there's only so many cards in the box, right? There's only so many buildings and things you can do. I thought we would kind of get bored with them and run out, but for some reason, I keep feeling like I find a new card to fiddle with every time I play or to build a strategy around. Like I could see maybe why it might get stale after a while, but it hasn't really happened to me yet. And I'm sure I'm developing specific openers and stuff that I like to do. My favorite card is the library, unsurprisingly. Um, and I've just, I've played tons of games of it. Every time we sit down to play a game, I'm like, come on, we'll play San Juan first as kind of the warm up. And I've never done this whole do a warm up thing before. This is new, this is new to me. I've never had an opener, I should have been sit down like to call it, or what's it called? Oh, I can't think of the other great word for these filler games. There you go, filler games. I've never done that. I normally just sit down and play a full game and it's been unusual for me to do that. So San Juan has got a lot of plays and I'm good at it. 
<laughs> That's a nice fit. I'm good at it. I won the first game and I won some more games. Um, it's a good feeling. Um, I, I can lay cards on table with victory points good. Um, so that's been good. Um, the other game that's exploded in our house is Saikatsu, which is the little bird game I picked up last month. And it's kind of gone the way of San Juan, where it's just this quick thing and it's just so much fun to play that you can't put like, oh, quickly, we'll just, you know, play a game of this. Um, so Saikatsu is indeed a, a game of birds and your birds are on these little desks and they go on a he um, kind of, I don't want to call it a hex grid, but it goes on a, on, on a grid. So there are rows and lanes. <laughs> That's not the word. What's it called in your Excel spread? Rows and columns. There you go. Um, and you basically, you place your birds down and you want to connect birds of the same color to get victory points. And at the end of the game, the amount of flowers you have that match around your birds. So they all have like a little wreath of color around them. You want to match those up for victory points at the end of the game. And I've played this thing so, so much. I have in fact played it over the internet um, with me moving all of the pieces. And the more I play it, the more fascinating it gets. Cause I only realized like after our eighth or ninth game that how the game works is that for you to get points, you have to have taken them away from your opponent. So you can't just play by yourself. You really have to watch what the other person is doing. Because if you let them away with it, they'll run away with it. It's, it's just, it's, oh, it's a bizarre concept for me. I'm terrible at these kind of uh, con confrontational games. Um, but it's just so much fun and it's so quick. I love the components. Like this is a, a really stellar game. Um, and I, I, yeah, I can, I can see us playing even more and more of it and getting more and more fishes. We're getting awfully competitive about it right now. So competitive that we're both like scoring so little points than when we started because we're just blocking each other off at every point. Um, so that is Saikatsu. So the final game I'm going to talk about um, fits in with the themes of games I bought. Um, and this is Lisboa um, from Vatel Lacerda. Yes, yes, I know. It's a bit silly. But to justify buying the other Lacerda games, I promised myself I would play the one I had a couple of times to be able to say, well, look, I could play it if I wanted to. You know, it didn't just get left on the shelf. And I just wanted to see how that style of design or that style of play fit with me. It's been a long time since I've played Lisboa, maybe six months or more. Um, so I forced myself, my husband, to sit down and play it. Um, so Lisboa is basically your... You're rebuilding a city after a fire, and I think then there was a flood or an earthquake, maybe then a flood. A bunch of disastrous things happened to Lisbon, and you're going around taking away the rubble, setting up shops, trading in goods, and basically ask, you know, pleading with the nobles for sorts of actions. Um, when I describe it out loud like that, it actually makes lots of sense. But for some reason, and I've played this game like eight or nine times now, I still don't feel like I know what I'm doing, or or how everything fits together. It all just feels a little disparate for me. That hence why I wanted to play it more times because I felt like I've, I've always felt like I was missing something with Lisboa. Um, I do think the game has a lot of cool things to it. Everything is very interconnected. So you do this thing with that, other well, you do this thing, but you'll need to do this thing first and go and do that. And um, they, I don't think there's a straight line between how these things connect. I think that's the thing. I think they do connect, but I just don't see a direct line. Um, and I was I was worried about that when we played it because I was like, well, well what's the point in getting another Lacerda game if I can't figure this one out? Um, I come to the conclusion that this one isn't just isn't for me. Um, it's definitely my least favorite out of all the ones I've played, which is surprising. Um, because I don't know, it seems to fit me right. This is quite there's quite a bit of like. You're managing your hand, you're managing your actions. You know, there are things, there are things I like, but I, I think it just doesn't make enough logical sense for me to follow. Um, now, other people absolutely love Lisboa, and I'm not surprised um, because it is it is beautiful. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of, of ways to approach it, but for whatever reason, it's just not clicking with my brain. Um, and despite this, I still went and got on Mars anyway. Um, so, like, just by comparison, on Mars is so much more straightforward, I think, than Lisboa. It, and my brain is able to follow along with it. I think Lisboa is beautiful and has a, a great idea, but how it fits together is slightly beyond me. And I've no concept of how how I would win better or do my scores better. Like, I've spent, like, the number of games now going, I'm just going to focus on going through the actions till I fully understand them. So then I'll be able to put them together into some sort of strategy. And I still haven't got to that point yet.
Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any games that have like defeated you or that just made you feel like, you know, why can't I get this? You know, what's wrong with me? Um, are you sure you, there's nothing wrong with you? Um, Anachrony made me feel the same way. I couldn't understand why I couldn't like it and everyone else seemed to. Um, and it was, it was really hard. It was the game I didn't want to give up on. Like we kept playing it even though we didn't like it. Um, and you just got to realize that some games just aren't for you and it's so okay and then other people will like them and that's also okay um so this boa is not my jam apparently but um i have been really enjoying all the other lacerda titles so tell me what you've been playing let, let's hit let's hit let's hear let's hear it all out has there been anything that's been a standout i definitely want to hear anything that kind of stand out or surprised you anything that really disappointed you i think talking about games that didn't work is just as important as talking about games that do work um because you know if they don't work for you for particular reasons they might work for somebody else for that exact same reason um so this is why you know we have opinions and reviews and whatnot um yeah so i'm looking forward to hearing about what you've been playing Righto, so now that we've done all the talking about games and things, um, I just kind of suppose I fill you in with some updates about the channel. Um, so as you've noticed, I haven't put out any new videos this month. Well, Sorcerer City was already there and ready to go. Um, I haven't been making videos at all. This is the first one I've made since, well, the last one I've made. Um, and you know what? I'm bad at taking a break. <laughs> I can't take a break at all. I'm absolutely terrible at it. And you know what? I think I felt... I feel worse when I'm not doing something. Um, so I'm slowly but gradually trying to do more things. Um, oddly enough, I haven't stopped doing board game content at all, just videos. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but um, on both my Twitter account and Facebook account, I've been putting out um, a badly drawn board game cover um, every day. Um, because people, I think, are stuck inside the house right now and people, I suppose, myself included, can feel a little bit miserable, a little bit trapped and it's nice to have something to smile at. So I decided to basically draw board game covers in my own hand, might I add, I'm no artist, um, and have people guess what they thought the game was. Um, it's been going pretty strong now for the past like three weeks or so and I, people seem to be having fun with it. I'm eventually going to run out of covers or my ability to draw said covers, but so far, you know, it hasn't happened. So come and follow along and let's hear your guesses and see what you think they are. Um, and hopefully it'll be just like a little bit of entertainment. Um, what else has been happening? So there's a new episode of the Tabletop Inquisition podcast, which will come out on Monday. You should see this on Wednesday um, with a wonderful interview with Jess, the board game girl. Um, and that was really, really fun. And there's also a whole bunch of past episodes there if you're looking for something to listen to, where myself and Oliver from the Tabletop Games blog discuss all things games. We do interviews. We try and define... Um, we try and define board game terminology and we usually have some sort of kind of board game related topic that we'll have a bit of chit chat about. Um, it's really fun. Um, why, you know, you should totally listen to it if you have any interest in podcasts. Um, and it's, it's definitely worth having a look at. So what's been going on around here? Um, well, I've recently been doing a lot of evaluating um, about the channel, about how I approach the world and things like that because I think I've been stuck in this rut where I feel like if I want my this channel to do well or if I want people to see my videos I have to do exactly what everyone else is doing to get there right um so it always seems to be you know kind of the people who are really good at being social and interactive and making friends with everybody and going to conventions and stuff like that that seem to you know kind of have the most impact or the most reach um I'm not that kind of person um sure I love people but I find people a little overwhelming at the best times and I kept thinking to myself that I have to be able to put out a piece of content every week or um I have to be social and I have to promote myself that's something I'm terrible at I hate promoting myself I don't I don't ever want to tell you you know I'm amazing you should buy this game because I told you so I'm just I'm not that person the the whole purpose of my reviews and the entire purpose of my channel was to give you some information about these board games so that you could decide for yourself because you know what I'm not here to decide for you or show something down your throat it's just not not it um and it's just how then are you supposed to reach people if you don't promote yourself see it's kind of a catch-22 situation here um but I've decided screw it um <laughs> 
I like I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I've never expected my channel to be get particularly big. I just I always hoped that there would be people, um, I guess like yourself who would be happy to kind of sit and listen and learn some stuff and feel like they discovered some new board games. I want you to come and have a chat with me. I want to be like your friend. Um, I do not want to be some sort of promoter. Um, and I guess I just have to figure out how to be more me about this all, um, about all of this. And I think the badly drawn board game covers have shown a lot to me. That was my own little stupid idea. And I'm getting so many people um, reacting about it with me. You know what I mean? And I just... That's what I want to do. Um, I want to hear from you. Um, you know, I, I want to I want to connect with people and talk to them about games. That's really what I want. Um, and so I'm going to focus more on doing that. Um, and all this kind of lull I've had with making videos. Um, you know what? It, when the review copy for Ocean showed up, it just made me feel a bit better inside. It gave me a purpose. It gave me something to do. And it reminded me that there's a reason I've been making so many videos and things and why I haven't quit this yet. It's because it's actually important to me and to who I am as a person to keep me functioning, to keep me going. Um, and there was something quite life affirming about that, that I, that I can do this, that it that it matters to me um, and it's not just something I've, I've kind of picked up as a hobby that this is something I I hope I will continue to do um, and so yeah I'm, 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 I'm trying to arrange some more review copies and that seems to have helped me a lot because for some reason reviewing my own games has never excited me isn't that weird um, I guess there's just no impetus upon me to do it in any sort of hurry or frame or fashion um, but I'm going to work, I'll work on that too so yeah so that's really what's been going on around here um, yeah lots of like reevaluating, rethinking um, maybe restructuring um, and we'll see we'll see where that leads and I look forward to hopefully creating more videos now this month I have a couple of things I'm ready to go with and sharing them all with you um so I hope you guys have had a good month um you know and thanks for being here and watching this video as always um and I'll stop saying um any minute now any minute now. you can tell it's been a while since I made a video because I can't remember how to talk straight <laughs> But yeah, tell me how you're doing. Let's have like a little check-in. Let's have a little check-in once a month. Are we all so good? Everything okay? Um, yeah, and let's hear about your games. So until next time, everybody, um, take care and tune in for more short and informative board game reviews. Bye-bye.